Do you ever watch a programming tutorial where they tell you to follow these specific steps but at the same time you are thinking why am I doing any of this? How do these guys on tutorials come up with this stuff? You keep typing all these scripts from tutorials but you have no idea why. And normally after the tutorial you forgot everything that you just learned. And the next time when you want to create something yourself, you can't. And then you will go back to the same tutorial, watch everything again and forget everything again. Why is that? I will tell you why but don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel because after you watch this video you will become a way better programmer than you were before you discovered this video and I mean it so let's begin. In this video I'm going to teach you what no channel has done before. I will guide you through a process of how programmers think. When we code we don't just come up with these programming solutions just randomly. Maybe if you are a beginner maybe you do that but professional coders don't. There is a clear structure for how we write code. This is called a thought process or logical thinking. For example when you are looking for a job and you are being interviewed in a company what interviewers want to see is how you think. To them your thought process is the most important thing. They will give you this program a task that you must solve and even if you fail you still might pass because you have the right mindset of course that varies from company to company but let's not bother you with this interview stuff because this video is not about that what we want to focus instead is that you can build new features without looking at any tutorials and the only way to do that is to build the right programming habits that we will discuss in this video there was nobody to teach me any of this i had to learn it all the hard way and that only made me stronger and because of that i I have so much to share. We are going to create this Minecraft inventory bar. I don't have to explain what Minecraft is, you probably already know that. Everybody knows Minecraft, it's the most popular game in the world and most sold game all time. I will recreate Minecraft inventory bar from scratch in Unity, but not only that, I will also explain all the thought processes involved in building it. This won't be your typical Unity tutorial where I will just tell you, hey, just write an array here and call it a day. That is not what we do on my channel. Every next video that I make will make you a better developer. And I promise you that the GitHub project will be available in the link in the description. And let's finally begin our tutorial. Let's pretend that we are working in a game dev company where a designer approaches us with a request to build an inventory bar that looks just like the one in Minecraft. And you are like, sure, no problem, let's do it. Now that you are given this task, how do we start? Normally we will go to Google and search for the Minecraft inventory bar images and do our research. And what data can we extract from these images? What can we learn? We know that there are 9 inventory slots. If you count them individually, you will get 9 slots. Why does it say 8 here when I said there are 9 slots? Well, in programming, the first number is always 0 and not 1 like you learn in your math class. If we count from 0 to 8, we will get the number 9. What other information do we know? I watched some Minecraft gameplay footage and I learned that the inventory bar is fixed and it never changes. You can only have 9 slots and it never grows or shrinks. Now you might be thinking, why would I care about that? This is extremely important to know because based on this information you will know exactly which data structure to select. But now again you might be thinking, what the heck are data structures? Now I probably confused you even more, so let me explain. Data structures are the most important thing in programming. If you quit right now while I'm trying to explain data structures and their importance, you will never ever become a programmer. Sorry that I have to put it this way, but it is how it is. I used to not take data structures seriously because I thought that those are just some things that some old school boomer developers do. I can't explain how wrong and arrogant I was. I thought I will just focus on building video games. Who cares about these data structures, right? And you always given this advice in these game dev communities. Just build video games bro and I hate that advice with passion. And this advice damaged my programming career in so many ways I had to relearn everything after years of building these bad programming habits. Maybe you went to college and you learned about data structures and their importance but there are countless people like myself who didn't know that. This is especially a problem with game programmers as many of them are self-taught solo indie devs. So what does that tell us? There is a high probability that you also skip data structures and you didn't take them seriously. Your probably first touch with programming was watching some YouTube tutorial on how to build another Flappy Bird clone but you were never introduced to data structures. You could go on for years like this and keep thinking 
What am I missing? Why do I still have to watch these goddamn tutorials? So that's why you don't want to end up like me and let's learn about data structures. Data structures are the way how we organize data. We can use a real life example. Let's imagine you didn't wash your dishes for days and since you are a good mama boy, you decided to do it. After you did that, you arranged everything into its own place where it belongs. But since not all dishes are the same, we arrange them differently. Plates are stacked upon one another while cups are placed next to one another. In order for me to reach to the third plate, I need to remove the first one and the second and then I can access the third one. And if we look at the cups and if I want to do the same, I can go directly for the third one and it's way quicker than doing the same with the plates. This is exactly how data structures work in programming. It is just a way how we organize data so that it becomes way easier to find and access the information that we are looking for. Like the example with dishes, data structures work exactly the same, while some data may be easier to access, other data will need more time. Being easier to access doesn't make it a better data structure. Each data structure has its advantage depending on the context. There are 8 main data structures in C -sharp and those are arrays, lists, dictionaries, linked lists, stacks, queues, trees and graphs. You need to know all of them and I mean it, it's non-negotiable. Every person that aspires to become a programmer must learn it in depth. I recommend that you write all of them from scratch and after you do that you will look at programming with a different set of eyes. Also keep in mind that they are language universal and every language has them. Trust me, after you learn data structures you will become to understand every other programming language. I can look at JavaScript or Java code and write exactly the same in c because data structures mainly language agnostic. So now our task is to select the best data structure to organize our inventory slots. And how are we gonna do that? Let's look at the Minecraft inventory bar image again and let's analyze the shape of it. What do you see? If we look closely you will notice that the inventory bar is in a linear shape. It stretches from left to right in a sequence. This is super important to know because there are two types of data structures, linear and non-linear. Linear data structures are arrays, lists, dictionaries, link lists, stacks and queues while trees and graphs are non-linear data structures. If we follow a simple rule of elimination we will remove trees and graphs because they are non-linear and now we are only left with six other data structures to select from. We could build our inventory bar using trees and graphs but that would be an overkill. They are used for more complex data structures, for example in game of Path of Exile they use it for the skill tree. But our inventory bar is a more of a linear nature and we want to stick with that. Now let's continue our elimination game. Could we use a queue maybe? We know that in a game like Minecraft, in order to remove or add an item, it can be done directly. In order to add an item to the inventory bar, you can drag it with your mouse cursor or to remove it, you can drop it into the world. And if it did go with the queue, and let's say there is an item in the third slot that we want to remove it. If you remember the example with the plates, where we had to remove the first plate and the second plate in order to remove the third one, is the same with the queue in this example with the inventory bar so we would need to visit the first slot then the second slot and then on the third slot we can remove it and that is not optimal and now I will remove queues from our selection list and also I will remove link lists and stacks because they work exactly the same link list stacks and queues are only okay if we wanted to remove the item in the first or the last slot but let's say we want to remove this one in the middle that would require us to visit every slot before the one in the middle and that's really not what we want to do and now we are left with only three data structures arrays list and dictionaries let's try dictionaries can we use them what happens when you have three slots occupied and you walk over an item that's on the ground that item will go into your fourth slot, right? The thing with dictionaries is that it doesn't allow us to access the data in a sequence. In order for us to add an item into the fourth slot, we will need to iterate through the first three slots and then we can add it to the fourth slot. And this is something that dictionaries do not support. While dictionaries give us this fast access, it doesn't give us a possibility to iterate, so we will remove it from the selection. And now we are only left with two data structures, arrays and lists. In this case we can go with either, with both we can access any slot and we can iterate. But 
We are programmers and we care about optimization and precision. Earlier we learned that the inventory size is fixed of 9 slots and that it cannot be changed at the runtime. Arrays and lists are almost identical but the only difference is that lists size can be changed during the runtime. The way lists do that is they need to create a copy of itself and then reiterate everything again and that causes the extra memory and time complexity. Since our inventory bar size is never changing it's pointless to use use a list in this case, even technically we could. We can go with an array and pre-allocate 9 memory slots and it will stay like that forever. And finally we have a winner and it's an array. You had a chance to experience how I think and how I make decisions. I didn't make any decision just randomly, I actually did research and planned accordingly. I didn't go too much into details how each data structure works because that would become a 40 hour video and we don't have time for that. Data structures are not the only thing that you must learn software there are actually more things. The three main pillars of software development are data structures, algorithms and design patterns. Once you learn all three you can call yourself a software developer. We already talked about data structures but what are design patterns? Let's talk about those. They are very important in programming. They help you build a scalable software. I know that every beginner has faced this where they build this game and then they realize that they can't extend it any further. And then they had to rewrite the entire game from scratch. And that is because they didn't consider design patterns beforehand. Every beginner did this and you're not alone, so don't worry. Some of the most popular design patterns are singletons, state machines, solid principles, observers, etc. You probably already heard of some of them and you should study all of them, especially those that are used mainly in game development. Without them you're never going to build high quality software. I personally recommend that you first learn state machine or a more primitive version finite state machine. Once you learn it you will understand way better how game architecture is built. I use it everywhere all the time and if you don't know the state machine pattern you will not build anything larger than a flappy bird clone. Let's say you have built this game character that can jump and slide. When your character is in the air you don't want him to slide but you want him to jump when he slides. And somehow you make that work with too many if else statements but now you just discovered a bug where your player is able to jump when he dies. And when you start the game again now your player is being stuck in a jump state state that he cannot exit and now you have a broken game. He keeps jumping forever. Imagine if you wanted to add more things to the character like swimming, attacking, interacting. That code would not be really maintainable. You would have this spaghetti Frankenstein code that even archaeologists wouldn't be able to analyze. And that is why you want to learn a state machine pattern. And you would use it in more places and not just in the character example that I've given you. For example you would use it in AI behaviors where an AI can switch from a patrol state to attacking state or use it in game states where you switch from a main menu to a gameplay scene. There are countless ways to use this design pattern and it's a must for every game developer to learn. Ok I'm not gonna bother you with design patterns anymore, I just want to give you a brief overview of what it is and when it is used. Now let's focus more on algorithm side. Data structures are useless without algorithms and vice versa. For us to store, search and retrieve data we need algorithms. Together with data structures and algorithms combined with design patterns we get what we call software. In programming an algorithm is a well defined set of instructions or rules that describe a step by step process to solve a specific problem or accomplish a particular task. That would be your definition of algorithms in programming. There are several types of algorithms in programming and those are brute force, recursive, randomized, sorting, searching and hashing. Each one has its own use case depending on the data structures that you want to use or the time and memory complexity that you want to achieve. But I won't be discussing these types because you will only become confused and the video would become too long to watch. I just wanted to make you aware that these types do exist and so that you after watching this video can go and research everything yourself. I will be showing you things how to do them but also I want you to do some digging yourself and that's the best way to learn. I will be making tutorials but you must be learning from all sources on the internet. For us to create an inventory we can just take up these slots and place them one next to another and attach a horizontal layout component and call it a day. And let's say a manager comes up to us and says hey plans have changed 
we need 12 slots and not 9 anymore, you will need to duplicate again all these slots and then manually count them one by one. And for these 3 new slots that you just created, you will need to drag their references manually in the editor. That is too much of manual work and that's not how you do things. For complete beginners that's okay, but you don't wanna be a beginner forever. So let me show you how to do it like a pro. You always want to do things like this in code and you always want to have control over your code. Instead what I'm going to do, I will delete all these slots, only leave the first one, make it a prefab and then delete it. Then I will write a reference for the slot prefab and drag it in the inspector. And now we own the slot and we can do whatever we want with it within the code and we don't have to do any manual work. I will write one more line of code and expose it in the editor and I will name it slot count. The default value is 8 which means 9 slots in total. So when we want to change the inventory bar slot count, we can just go to the editor and change it in a second. There is no manual work involved in this. But still we don't have any slots available and that's because if you remember we deleted them in the editor and now we want to recreate them but this time in code. And also I'm going to create a container for our slots which is going to be a type of array and we will name it slots array. But how do I know it's an array? If you remember when we talked about data structures we selected an array as a perfect data structure for our inventory bar. That's how we know. Now we need to create those missing slots slots and we will do it in an awake method. The reason why we do it in awake method is because we want to prepare everything for the player before he even plays the game. Of course we are going to put it into its own method and then call it from awake. Now we need to write code to create our inventory slots and we will use a simple algorithm for that. There are three things that make an algorithm and those are math operations, conditionals and loops. Let's go with loops because that is what we will use for the inventory. There are three most common loops in C sharp and those are four for each and while. Which one are we going to use? For loop is used the best when we know how many iterations are going to happen. In our example we know that it is going to be 9. And also it gives us this increment operator here that works perfectly with arrays. The way we traverse an array is using indexing and luckily a for loop gives us this index here that we can use for traversing. While loop could be used here but it forces us to write these extra lines of code which we don't want to do and also it makes the code less readable and maintainable. For loops are useless here because they are only used when we want to traverse an existing array with populated elements. Our slot array cannot be iterated because it has zero elements and pretty much for each loop is useless here. So our winner is for loop. Inside of it we will instantiate our slot prefab and cache it into an array. So our array now becomes populated with elements. And within this class we can do whatever we want with that array. Okay now let's play the game and let's see what's going to happen. And as you can see we have successfully created 9 inventory slots. We can now stop our game and we can enter 12 slots instead and let's see what is going to happen. And as you can see we didn't need to manually extend this inventory bar. We can just change it here in the editor. Even better solution to this would be to use something like a JSON file so you could have your designer to make changes to the game even without opening the Unity. We'll probably somewhere in the future make a tutorial on that. What we did in this video is something very simple, it could be done in few minutes. But the reason why it lasts this long is because I want you to learn some good practices and principles. I share with you this overview of how programmers think and make decisions. I talked about three most important things in programming and I recommend that you start focusing on learning them. You can watch as many tutorials as you want but you will never become a programmer until you learn data structures, algorithms and design patterns. You can buy a course on Udemy or buy a book or whatever works for you. You just have to learn it. And if you don't, you will be stuck in tutorial hell forever. If you are looking for a free community where you can get the best Unity programming tips, I built a Discord server that you can join. It's still a new community that I'm looking to grow. I'm always available, so feel free to ask me any questions. This is it guys, if you like my video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video.